I love every aspect of the landscape and every so often something grabs my attention. Especially when he's looking at old maps. Or in this case, a modern one. Every so often something pops up which we just can't explain. So what exactly have we found that has caused much debate in the house this week? So this is North Dorset Chalk Downland area and the, uh, the lovely OS printout, just for clarity. Uh, you'll see at the north here in the centre, we've got a lovely, probably Iron Age hill fort. We've got a trig point here, so we're up quite high. Now, let's put this on screen so you can see if we zoom in, a curiosity, two air shafts in quite close proximity to one another. Doesn't seem quite right, does it? So let's have a look at the possibilities. Now, first of all, you're thinking railway tunnel, right? Nope. This is Rail Map Online and it highlights that there isn't anything for miles. And in fact, this is Canal Map Online and it says the same thing. Okay, so it's probably not transport related as such. Maybe it's more military, maybe Cold War, maybe an ROC bunker or something maybe more modern military. You'd think, but looking at these maps from National Library of Scotland, they're dated 1880, so they can't be World War related or even anything more recent. Wait, I saw on that old map two big chalk pits, so clearly they were connected by some kind of tunnel and they are ventilation shafts for that tunnel, right? No, not really, but as you say, some hill forts did have flint pits and chalk pits and they did have up to 200 shafts and yes, some of them did connect. But in this case, they're 200 yards apart and they don't even align. True, and they are so close together as to largely be pointless. And of course, would Iron Age folk really construct air shafts? So, that most obvious base is covered, um, but what's Paul going to decide to do? So I decided there was only one thing to do, and that was to come and have a look for myself with my own eyes. So the roads around here are quite narrow, narrow lanes, or fast roads that are still quite thin themselves. So I've had to park about a mile away. So I'm way down in the distance there in Duntish Farm. But what that does do is that gives me the opportunity to have a look at a couple of other features on the way. Okay, back onto another road before we cross in again into that castle hill. First thing I notice is this hedgerow, which is sort of, I want to say non-indigenous. I'm not quite sure what it is, like a rhododendron kind of leaf hedgerow. So that tells me that it's sort of planted here deliberately by a landowner. Oh wow. So an archway on this public bridleway and uh, noise tractor. Um, wow, this is really, really different. We're obviously on a part of an old estate, despite the fact obviously there's public access to this part. And uh, yeah, crazy landowner. Don't know sort of what era this is because there's not a lot of information on it. As it happens, we do know a little bit about this site and its potential link to Dungeon Hill um, and those mystery shafts. Did you just emphasise the word shafts? No, it's all in your head. Oh. So 1764, a chap named Fitzwalter Foy had a grand house built for him. And that gives us some context to all the crazy things I'm finding on this estate. he had all these crazy things built. You did find a secret grotto, right? No, that was the one thing I couldn't find and it is there because a lady called Tess um, went there recently as well and found it. So, but it also gives us some context of all the crazy things that this guy got up to on site. Now, local legend is that Dungeon Hill is named so because there is a dungeon somewhere on site. So could that have been built by him? Oh 
Okay, so let's get to the actual shafts. You can get to the shafts, can't you? Well, yes, but not directly. So I had intended to speak to the local farmer, uh, but I, I arrived on a Saturday, so all I found were a whole bunch of inquisitive cows. So I decided to go in from a different direction. Okay, walk out the bridleway now that footpath that runs alongside the field with the hill fort and uh, the shafts. So where are the dungeons? So we're almost level now, east-west with the pillars, with the air shafts. I say pillars because they look like pillars. Looks like someone's entrance to their driveway. Um, the first thing you notice about this hill fort up ahead of us, Dungeon Hill Fort, is the views all around. Really quite stunning. Today helps because it's a clear day, you can see a very long way. Right now I'm looking at the stone pillars, the shafts. So first of all, I decided to check out the chalk pits because as we heard, a lot of people mentioned that maybe these were connecting one another when we put this out on social media. So I checked out the first chalk pit and then I went up and round to have a look at the hill fort. Now, the beauty about all of this is I didn't have to cross any fences as such. So these were open gates I went through, which was great. So I was able to walk south from the hill fort down towards the shafts. And then if there was somebody watching, it didn't look too sort of conspicuous. There's also a trick point in that field as well. Oh. Here we are. <laughs> Never seen an air shaft look like this, but I'm not an expert on air shafts. It's got vents at the top, stuck the camera in. Don't know what was down there if the, if the GoPro could see, but we'll have a look at that and see what we can find out. The mystery remains. Uh, let's go back to the studio. So a couple of notable points. Number one, the brickwork technique is English bond. Now that was stopped uh, being a construction method in around 1900, late 1800. So that fits in with the maps perfectly. Number two, we did manage to get a GoPro into the hole. It looked deep, but it did look dry. So let's slow this shot down. Let's take a screen grab and lo and behold, a friendly face from Twitter played with the image and came up with this. So it doesn't solve anything as such, but it does give us an idea of how deep this shaft really is. So what next? Can we solve this mystery? Now this crazy landowner did reputedly do some odd things up here and he found a whole bunch of treasure, reputedly. But at the same time, he didn't have much regard for the archeology. span I mean, look at this bridge he built in the middle of the hill fort. Could this lead to the sinister purpose of the shaft? I would like to think that, but my logic head's kind of thinking water. Water, you mean like an underground reservoir or system? Yes. Uh, okay, that would kind of make sense because I guess it, yeah, a spring could feed it, mm. um, maybe. But there's a couple of questions that go with that. Number one, I didn't hear any water. And number two, do you get springs up that high on Chalk Downland? We don't know. Don't know. But there's more. It turns out post-production there was indeed. Luckily, we filmed that just in case. After much help from a lot of people on Twitter, one person came up with this. Now, how reliable or accurate it is remains to be seen, but it does look quite good. So it turns out that this is highly likely a deep vent for some form of water supply. Be it abandoned or disused, it's definitely something to do with either the removal of water or the supply of water. Now, Sadly, this doesn't help us find the dungeon. Ah, conclusion made. Now we know. All adds up. Mm. Right, if you like this type of content, if you like us exploring old railways, 
abandoned canals um, and map mysteries like this one, then do click on the subscribe button. Mm -hmm. Anything else I should do, Rebecca? The notification bell. Click on the notification bell. I don't bell. know where that is. <laughs> we do videos air once a week, every Sunday, early evening. So do join us. And we'll see you this time next week. Bye.